Welcome back, you botters! Anytime you want to complete a task on the web, you're going to have to interact with a variety of different buttons, forms, and fields. We refer to each of these unique parts of a page as elements. And UBOT4 has a new and intelligent way to find and manipulate them. This will speed up your bot creation considerably and should have you making bots much faster than ever before. If you're new to making bots, then think about the following analogy. To do anything on the web, you're going to have to find a way to get there, whether it's clicking sign up forms, filling fields, or pressing the upload button. UBOT doesn't know where to go until you tell it, but then it remembers. Think about UBOT like driving a car. If you're driving a car, you have to make sure it has gas and oil, and you have to be pretty smart to drive it. But it's much faster than having to navigate the streets on foot. Most of the time, Element selection is completely automatic, but sometimes the elements are hidden and we have to get a little bit fancy to interact with them. UBOT does this very well. Here's how it works. I'm going to go back to my playground page, my fake account creation form, located at ubotstudio.com slash playground slash simpleform.aspx. Now I'm going to start out by just dragging the username field like we did in the last tutorial. We're going to type something and we're just playing around here to get a feel for what we can do with this and let's click OK. Now when we hit run it does exactly what we expected and puts something in the username field. Now let's edit it and see what else we can do with it. Let's say that we didn't really mean to put the username field in here. Let's say what we meant to say was the first name field. So what I did just now is I clicked on this little button with the angle brackets. And by doing that, it lets me choose the element that I want. And as you can see, it outlines it with a pretty purple box. So let's go ahead and choose the first name field instead. Alright, and as you can see in the element selector up here, it put first name field. So let's click OK and hit run. And just as expected, it's now focused on the first name field. So that might be the easiest way. By clicking this button, it lets you choose an element and UBOT will figure out the best way to identify it, just like it did when you first dragged it. But let's say we need to get just a little bit fancier. Let's say that instead of the first name field, we really want to choose all of the fields at the same time. How could we do that? Well, for that, we're going to have to get kind of advanced. So let's click this settings button right here. And that brings up our advanced element editor. And in our advanced element editor window, we can see the full HTML for the element that we've chosen. We also have a box that says attributes here that lists all of the attributes that we have available to us. Let's go with the name attribute. All right, this is the big, messy, convoluted name that we have for our first name field. Now, the interesting thing about this form is that all of the elements have pretty much exactly the same name except for this little tiny bit at the end. So what if we wanted to choose all of them according to this part in the name but we know that this part is going to change? Well that's fine. We simply delete this and we put an asterisk instead. Asterisk is going to be a wild card. Now in order to use wildcards, you have to make sure that you select wildcards from the drop down over here. We're going to click add and that's going to create our selector for us. This is our special selector language. It can get pretty advanced. You don't need to learn it because UBOT will make all of it visual for you and it's going to write all of it for you. When you're ready to get more advanced with it, you can look at our resources on how this little selector language works, but until then, you can just trust UBOT to do the heavy lifting.
So if I hit OK, you can see that our element selector has now changed to what I asked it to be. And if I click OK and then hit Run, you see that it's typed something into every single field. And that's because it's choosing it by the name and since all of the fields start with this piece of text and then has a wildcard, UBOT selects all of them and then fills it with the text that we asked for. Now there's one other way to choose elements. And this is only available in the pro version of UBOT, but this is perhaps one of the most powerful ways to interact with web pages with UBOT. So let me show you that. If you click on the camera, what you get is a little crosshairs that you can then select a portion of the website as an image. And as you can see by looking at what happened to the selector, it's telling it to choose an element based on what it looks like on the web page. So in this case, it's kind of hard to see here, but this is actually a thumbnail image of that little piece that we selected down there. And we're going to hit OK now. And when we run it, you see that it found the element according to the picture and typed in something just like expected. Now where this really comes in handy is using Flash. You can actually use this not only to find HTML elements on the page, but to find anything that shows up on the page. That means that on a lot of video sites where you have flash uploaders, you can go ahead and push the buttons using this method. And it works exactly like it works in the rest of UBOT. This gives you a lot of power, and there isn't anything else on the market that gives you this kind of power to manipulate flash. So I hope that you're starting to see the kind of power that you get with UBOT 4 and how it's going to help you in your internet marketing or general web automation activities. Thanks again for watching this tutorial and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.